Hello there. Welcome to Light and Basic Taking His Glory to the Ends of the World. Today's message is captioned Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. And our team scripture is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. Please, I'm reading from the KJV. Paul wrote to the saints at Thessalonica and said to them in the first epistle, says, quench not the spirit. As a Christian, you have to understand that there are things you do that can put out, suppress, stifle, and quench the activity and divine influence of the Holy Spirit in your life putting you at a great disadvantage. The Holy Spirit, that great comforter, the Allos Paracletos, the one that Jesus said, is an another of mankind, another of the same kind as the Lord Jesus. That Lord Holy Spirit has been sent to you as your great helper, advocate, comforter, intercessor, and Stand by. His forever abiding presence in you is to grant you all the assistance you will need in life. He has been called to go with you in everything that you do, wherever you go. It's your help, especially in difficult situations. However, this is not automatic. He needs our collaboration. He needs your collaboration. The spirit of the great God is gentle. He doesn't force himself on anyone. You have to encourage his influence and activity in your life. You don't do that by only wishing or desiring it. Wishing and desiring it is important, it's key. But you don't do that by only wishing and desiring it. But you have to go in addition by conducting and directing your life, regulating your life in the spirit. You cannot quench the Holy Spirit. You see, when Paul says that quench the Holy, don't quench the Spirit, he's not talking about the person of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes many people don't understand that. That's not what, you have to understand Paul's communication. Because you cannot quench the Holy Spirit. You cannot quench God. You cannot quench God. You cannot quench a person. But you can quench and diminish his influence and activity in your life. You do that by walking and fulfilling the desires and lust of the flesh. And you live and walk in the flesh. You quench the activity and influence of the Holy Ghost in your life. Paul says, For the flesh lasted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. There are many Christians who over the years have wondered about the difference between grieving the spirit and quenching the spirit. Because in the book of, in this epistle to the efficient Christians, you talk about not grieving the spirit. To the Thessalonica Christians, you talk about quench, not quenching the spirit. And over the years, many people have wondered what is the difference between these two. People have written books and given all kinds of explanation to that. But the answer to that is very simple. Sometimes we over-spiritualize things. You see, and that's why when you over-spiritualize things, we, 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 we go out of context and then we get a wrong interpretation of what that man of God, Paul, was trying to communicate to us. And then we lose the blessing. The explanation, the answer to that is very simple. You cannot quench the Holy Spirit because He is a person, but you can grieve Him. The same way you can do things to grieve any other human being. The same way human beings are grieved by things. See, 
when you don't like something and it's being done, you are grieved by it. The same way, when the Holy Spirit, remember the Holy Spirit is a Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit means He is holy, godly, righteous, holy, most holy. So when you do anything which is not holy, anything which is ungodly, He becomes grieved. God is inconsistent with His nature and He's living in you. So anything that we do, which is wrong, which is sinful, grieves the Holy Ghost. Grieves the Holy Ghost. That is, you grieve Him by fulfilling the desires of the flesh. When you fulfill the desires of the flesh, you grieve Him. Because all the desires, these desires of the flesh are unholy things. These lusts of the flesh, these are ungodly things. And it grieves him. To better put by walking in sins. So you grieve the Holy Spirit by walking in sin because he's holy. So anything sinful grieves him. This is what Paul means when he says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now the consequence of grieving the Holy Spirit is the quenching of the spirit, which is the diminishing of his activity in your life. As a Christian, you don't need much to know who has... Jesus actually put it in another way. He says, if anyone will obey my commandments, my father will love him, and I ought to love him, and we will take our board with him, and we will manifest ourselves to him. So, you know, the manifestation, you quench the manifestations of the Spirit through you when you walk in sin. I mean, you are not obeying his commandments. That's what he said. As a Christian, you don't need much to know who has been sent by God and who hasn't. If sin doesn't matter because of grace, it's because these uh, false teachers and these ignoramus teachers who come teaching Christians that because of grace, because Jesus has paid for their past, present, and future sins, uh, sin doesn't matter. So now Christians go on being proud, sinning, and, and then they go to church even praising Jesus for sinning because Jesus has paid it all. So sin does not matter. These are people leading uh, people in, uh, on their path and their way to hell because they have not really understood Christianity. Grace does not mean that go on sin and doesn't matter. Now, as a Christian, you see, God gave every Christian, every human being. He gave us a mind to think. So at the end, no Christian can come and argue with God at the last day. Because there are certain simple things that if any all those Christians who have been led astray, they will sit down and then they will reflect and think. They will know that these people are not really teaching the mind of God. But the question you, Christian, you have to ask yourself is this. The people that Paul wrote to and told them not to give the Holy Ghost, they were Christians. It's in the New Testament. Ephesians. Now, if sin doesn't matter, because of grace. If it doesn't matter because Jesus has paid for your past, present, and future sins, the question you ask yourself, beloved, is why then is the Holy Ghost grieved by you sinning? This is something simple. If sin does not matter because of grace, I don't expect the spirit of grace, I don't expect the Holy Ghost to be grieved. By me sinning, but the Bible tells you that if you sin as a Christian, you grieve the Holy Ghost. So what does that mean? This should be enough to tell you, the Christian, that grace doesn't mean sin is acceptable. That's why the Holy Spirit is trying is telling you that the grace doesn't mean sin is acceptable. Because if sin was is acceptable because of grace, I will not be grieved. That is what the Holy Ghost is telling us. So those who come and tell and call, and, and preach certain message with big grammar. And, and then they trace scripture, they take it out of context to tell you that sin doesn't matter because of grace. They are just lying to you. It matters. It matters. Sin matters to God. God is not a God of sin. He's a holy God. A God of righteousness. So this should be enough to tell you that grace doesn't mean sin is acceptable. 
Beloved, encourage the influence of the Holy Ghost in your life. Do that by walking in the Spirit and in righteousness and quench not that great, wonderful Holy Spirit of God. God bless you.